So we could first of all start out with this idea, what is access to the world? When I was in sitting in front of my first computer, a Commodore 64 uh, at about 1983, uh, I looked at the screen and I realized that everything that I can think of can be displayed on a screen if I really know how to think about it, right? I can write a program that produces an arbitrary pattern on the screen. Everything that I perceive is some kind of pattern. So in some sense, my access to the world, to the universe out there, is to some kind of screen. And that screen might be my retina or my thalamus, and my brain is making sense of this. And to understand the world, I need to understand what a pattern generator looks like that is responsible for producing those patterns. So we can ask ourselves, what kind of computer do we need to produce the patterns that we observe, right? And it could be a discrete state machine like my Commodore 64 with a finite amount of memory, uh, or it could be a probabilistic state machine that randomly goes from state to state or has a certain degree of randomness in there. Or it could be some quantum computer where every state is a superposition of um, a gr a ground states, right? Or it uh, could be one of these versions, but with infinite memory. And number four is basically our discrete state machine with infinite memory is our old friend, the Turing machine this mathematical formalization of modern computer. Or we could take the perspective of physics, which mostly thinks that the universe is geometric, which means uh, things move continuously, and is in, uh, there is at some, at least at the time level, infinite resolution. And uh, it could also be that it's even an A-causal hypercomputer, so there could be closed time-like loops, so information could be sent back in time. All these are, in some sense, mathematical possibilities. But um, what we have discovered is that there is a difference between mathematics and computation. Mathematics is the domain of all languages in which you can specify things, and computation is the part that can be implemented. And this is something that um, was discovered um, earlier in the 20th century. Basically, Hilbert saw some inconsistencies, especially after looking at Cantor's set theory when it came to infinities to infinite sets and the total set. And uh, he discovered we have a problem in semantics of mathematics in the way we define truth and we define what is true at all. Please mathematicians fix our metamathematics. And so they went to work and Gödel came back and said I have bad news. We cannot really build a computer in mathematics that doesn't break while running the semantics of mathematics. Turing also worked on this problem, the same one that um, Gödel worked on and he um, discovered that um, the, the same problem, right? Truth is defined via proofs in mathematics. Something is true if you can prove it. And a proof is the reduction of a statement to axioms. It's basically a form of data compression. You compress the statement to the axioms. And um, the way you do this is you apply a procedure. And mathematics is defined in a timeless fashion. So you can use infinite man in many steps to get there. And what Gödel and Turing discovered is that uh, you cannot use infinitely many steps because nobody can do this, right? Nothing can do this. You cannot make the claim that something is true when you cannot actually get there. In order to actually get there, you can only have finitely many steps, which means you have to redefine truth into something where you actually show the money, where you actually show how to get from your axioms to, to the proof in a finite number of mm -hmm, steps. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, in this sense, pi, for instance, is not a value. Pi is a function. You can run this function, it gives you new, di new digits until your local sun burns out, and this is it. Mm -hmm. But you can mm -hmm. never have a computation that depends on knowing the last digit of pi. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that a lot of physics uh, behaves as if you could. Because physics basically checked out this code library from mathematics without reading the comments. Especially the more recent ones that were done in the first half of the 20th century. So uh, basically the part of mathematics that works is constructive mathematics, it's the thing that you can implement, it's computation. Which means, um, of course we can build an A-causal hypercomputer in some sense, a computer that can send information back in time, we just do this by freezing this universe state, uh, then running a copy of the universe into the future, taking that information and merging it into the present state and continuing, right? So in some sense you can do this. Mm. You can not have a continuous universe, but you can have one that is arbitrarily quasi-continuous, that gets as close to continuity as you want. And on the level which, where we interact, there are always too many things to count, so if you squint, it's almost like infinite. So we look at these computations of how many parts behave in the limit, which means they're almost continuous. But if you zoom in, you realize it's still integers. It's still discrete. There is still only finite amounts of comp uh, information being moved around in finite amounts of time. So in some sense, we can use computation as a metaphor, this uh, ability of a system to go from state to state with the transition function. It's a deterministic one if it's the same one every time, and a deterministic one if it's a different one every time. 
we can use this to understand the, all the pattern generators that compute, can produce observables. But we can also build minds that observe these principles and do anything that's computable, that, that is, make any kind of model. So basically, your Commodore 64 is enough if you give it enough memory.